guys. Well, I guess uh, the socially acceptable thing to do now would be to reintroduce myself. So my name is Kaylin Vadera. I'm a freshman here at FSU. And <sighs> I have to be honest with you guys. I can kind of be awkward sometimes. Um, to be even more honest than that, it's more often than not. <laughs> so what I would like to do to start off my presentation is to preface it with a comic. Maybe you should try stepping out of your comfort zone more. I'm never in my comfort zone. I don't even think I have a comfort zone. I'm literally always uncomfortable. <laughs> so before, before I really delve in, I would like to share with you what makes me uncomfortable. And well, that's a lot of things. For me, it expands from spiders to public speaking uh, to high heels. So since there aren't any spiders here, and I don't really need the heels for public speaking, I'm going to make myself a little more comfortable. <laughs> when you search the word awkward on the internet, did you know that there are over 142 millions on Google results on Google alone? Did you know that when you search the word awkward on the internet, there are over 100 million results on Bing alone, and that there are over 8.5 million books written about it? Today we have two, over 284,772 different ways to define the word awkward. For something that has a negative stigma, it's, it's pretty popular. We can display it visually. We can define it in words. Merriam-Webster has seven different definitions just for one entry. And sometimes we can demonstrate it through actions. I was, I was one of those people who was blessed enough to be socially awkward and physically awkward. This picture in the middle was taken right after I fell off a post I was trying to climb. But do we really understand what it means to be awkward? One thing I've learned as a physics major is sometimes the best way to answer a question is with another question. So in what department or what college on the university campus would you expect to find the most amount of socially awkward students? Or even faculty. We're all people. And I guess I have no shame. I actually went to the class of 2016 page and posted this. I got some pretty interesting responses. But it's amazing. 5.36% of people assume that it might be in arts, human sciences, <laughs> media, communications, or even music. 94.64% thought it might be science, or engineering, or math. So this kind of got me thinking. If People who are in STEM fields are expected to be awkward, and that's where the prevalent is expected to be. How do they identify themselves? I consider myself awkward, but is that universal? My physics teacher was kind enough to allow me just to give this actual survey, handwritten. Um, it was kind of a spontaneous idea, so it was a spontaneous survey, uh, to investigate this myself. I got some pretty interesting definitions. Um, some of them were straight from the dictionary. I think they Googled it on their phone. Some of them were a little more thoughtful, and this is an actual answer for one of the students. And I think it's, it's pretty good accurate. Now, what you see here is three different bars. The yellow bar represents people who thought that being awkward had the potential to be beneficial. The red bar is people who thought it was a no-go. It will always be bad, and it will always be detrimental. And then you have the garnet, which it could kind of go both ways. And it is amazing to me that the people who don't identify as awkward are almost twice as likely to think that being awkward is bad. I don't think it's bad. These are some additional actual student responses. One that I would like to particularly point out is that one child actually said that awkward was synonymous with detrimental. 
but maybe it just means you're different. Or maybe it just means you're a little more nervous. For students who thought it could be both, I personally like the second one, if you can make it work for you. I've been told that my awkward is endearing. I'd like to think it is, so I'm going to. <laughs> and for those who said it was beneficial, there are some others who share my opinion. The one I'd like to highlight in particular is it's charming, <laughs> and that it's good for personal growth. That's the complete opposite of what a lot of people think. If it's detrimental, it can't be good for your personal growth, right? I hope to prove them wrong. 20% of the students surveyed in the STEM fields thought that being awkward has some benefits. 79.9 thought that it was inherently detrimental and hindered your personal growth. 50.2% of that group identify as awkward themselves. That's a pretty negative connotation from something a lot of people are experiencing. But what if I told you that being awkward was what you made it? What if I told you that being awkward was all about your attitude? But what if I told you that being awkward could be the key to success? One last definition, I promise. So I would be willing to agree that an awkward situation is probably uncomfortable for one or both of the people or groups involved. But I had this moment of realization one day driving home back to Central Florida from Tallahassee. Just zoning out while driving like I'm sure many of us do. And I happened to glance over and the girl in the car next to me was going the exact same speed. And we made eye contact. <laughs> and I, now I'm used to feeling uncomfortable in situations like this. But I stood my ground because I wanted to see what she did. <laughs> it took all of 10 seconds for her to speed up and we did not meet again. But then I realized, being awkward isn't just a social convention. It's part of the human condition. And rather than it being a lack of ability to respond to people, it's, it's a hyper-awareness. I mean, I think it's pretty hard to respond to people or to actually be coherent sometimes when I'm wondering, well, what are they thinking? Am I talking too much? Am I talking too slow? Did I wear the right thing today? There's just so many things. And it really does cause problems when you're trying to actively respond to someone in a creative way. Fight or flight. External and situational stress affects both the mind and the body. So if you're put into a situation where you experience discomfort, your body also responds. Your sympathetic ner nervous system effectively prepares you to cope with sudden stress. Your adrenal glands re release adrenaline and other hormones that, include <laughs> that increase breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure, which would explain the blushing, the shaking, the difficulty speaking, the lack of coherence. But did you know that these same hormones allow your senses to be sharper, allow for better memory, and allow for better tolerance for pain? These same stressful situations are the ones that provide the perfect stimulus. Viktor Frankl once said, in between the stimulus and a response, there's a space. In that space lies the power to choose our response, and in our power lies our growth and our freedom. The secret's in the spaces, though. PhD Elisha Goldstein poses the question, what is awareness of this space in that moment, could change the rest of your life. Although being awkward and having awkward situations does cause stress, it's important to remember that there's such thing as eustress, a good type of stress, and that it's a healthy and necessary part of life. It also releases norepinephrine, one of the principal excitatory neurotransmitters. Increases your good mood and makes situations that would be otherwise challenging seem like a better opportunity for you to grow. Refining this awareness, or in this case, hyper-awareness of spaces, allows you to be more flexible in your decision-making, to develop methods that allow you to calm yourself back down when you're put into a situation that would normally cause you to freeze up. And when you lose your coherence, it makes it possible to come back from it. 
It promotes greater focus, empathy, compassion, both toward yourself and others, and a better understanding of your values, your aspirations, and your personal skills. So how do you move into these new spaces? You have to be cognizant. You have to be aware that you're hyper-aware of everything around you and yourself. This allows for you to actually use your discomfort, because regardless, you're going be to be uncomfortable anyway. This increased self-awareness and this mindful presence in that situation and in that moment is a practical way to manage and control your stress. It promotes emotional freedom and even allows you to have a healthier brain. Some of those hormones that are released actually further the connections within your brain and allow your brain to actually grow. Situations that make you awkward or allow for a natural awkward response are the perfect spaces for introspection, development of perspective, and for personal growth. So I'm a physics major, so everything's kind of an equation, right? So, but the key to this is all about attitude. You have to be willing to embrace these uncomfortable situations and these awkward moments. Because what does this lead to? Increased self-awareness, introspection, increased hormones that make you happy, better focus, memory, and resilience, and stimulation of brain growth. Well, what do all these things equal long-term when you're willing to put yourself there and to grow? You're more likely to pursue a higher education. If you get your college degree, you're a lot more likely to make an even greater professional salary. And these, these skills you develop while you're combating this discomfort and while you're releasing these hormones makes for longer-lasting happiness. I don't think being awkward is so quite so bad. Move out of your comfort zone. You can only grow if you're willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable. Brian Tracy. This man could not be more right. So I would like to leave you with. Normal is a drier setting, but awkward is for life. Thank you.